lead acid battery is designed to deliver a number of cycles, which is dependent on the specification and charger package. A cycle is a discharge or working shift with a recharge following its discharge. It is imperative that the battery receives a full charge after its shift. Leave it connected until the charger completes its charge cycle and is shown a green light, LCD or lamp, depending on the charger type. Opportunity or incomplete charges with standard batteries and chargers is not acceptable. They will increase water use, increase temperature, cause poor performance and result in early battery failure. There are some specialised batteries and chargers available with electrolyte circulation where controlled opportunity charging is allowed. When a lead acid battery is on charge, it generates gases of hydrogen and oxygen as it breaks down the water content of the electrolyte. This breakdown of the water is to create bubbles inside the cells and to mix the electrolyte to regain an equal electrolyte strength throughout the cell. Where possible, the battery lid should be removed, lifted or the battery reached out to allow these gases to vent out into a larger area of air. These gases can be explosive if contained at a high concentration. To connect the battery to the charger, the battery plug should be removed from the truck and connected to the charger. This should be done by pulling the handles and not pulling the battery leads. Any plug or lead damage should be reported and the connection cancelled. It is advisable to use suitable PPE during this operation. Once connected, the charger will automatically begin to charge after a few seconds. Do not push any buttons. Wait until the charger has started charging before leaving the area. If any damage is found or the charger does not start, report it to a supervisor or manager. Depending on the charger type, the charger will display a charging indication by way of a light or LCD colour or lamp. The battery should then be left for the full period of recharge, either overnight or 8 hours dependent on the charger model. In all cases, it should be left until charge is complete, as indicated by a green light or LCD or lamp. If the charger indicates a fault by way of a red light or LCD or lamp, it should be reported to a supervisor or manager. On some models, a fault code will also be seen on the LCD by way of letters and numbers. This code should be noted and also reported to a supervisor or manager. When the charge is complete, as shown by a green light or LCD or lamp, the stop button must be pushed before attempting to disconnect the charger from the battery. Omitting to push the stop button could cause a spark, which in turn can ignite the hydrogen gas and cause an explosion within the battery. If all is in order, the charger plug should be disconnected from the charger and reconnected to the battery using the handles and not by pulling the cables. The charger cable and charging plug should then be stored in a safe place where it will not be damaged. Once the battery is reconnected to the truck, the lid can be replaced or closed or the battery reached back into the truck. The battery is now ready for a further shift. The system is more or less the same as charging the battery on the truck, but the battery should only be changed when the truck fuel gauge or light system says the battery should be charged. Disconnect the battery, as already explained, and remove the battery from the truck using the method provided. Take the battery to its charging position, and if a charger is available, connect it to the charger, observing all the procedures already explained. Ensure that the battery being taken to replace the exhausted one is fully charged, as indicated by a green light or LCD or lamp. If it is not showing fully charged, report it to a supervisor or manager. If it is fully charged and showing a green light or LCD or lamp, follow the same procedure as already explained, pushing the stop button before disconnection. Replace the charged battery into the truck and connect as previously explained. These batteries have an air circulation system within the charger and on the battery. The charge will have an air pipe which connects with an air distribution system on the battery by way of the battery and charger connection. These batteries are suitable for controlled opportunity charging as the electrolyte is mixed by low pressure air circulation to regain an equal strength throughout the cell. 
This reduces the charge time, reduces water loss, lowers the battery temperature and saves on the cost of electricity to recharge the battery. However, they still need to have a full charge on a daily basis to maintain their expected life. This full recharge could be in a shorter time than overnight or 8 hours, but fully charged is still indicated by a green light or LCD or lamp. There are two O-rings in the charger DC plug that may fail or get lost through time. These should be replaced at regular periods. High frequency and track air chargers are air cooled. This necessitates a dust filter being fitted underneath the charger. This filter should be checked every three months and cleaned or replaced as required. Parts are available at service at hapaka.co.uk. There are also some specialist battery systems such as rapid charge. However, operational use of these systems is not covered in this video and should be discussed and agreed directly with Hopaka. Information is available from sales at hopaka.co.uk. 1. Where possible, always lift or remove the battery lid or reach out the battery to allow the gases to escape. 2. Always push the stop button before disconnecting the battery from the charger. 3. Unless using track uplift air or uplift save, do not opportunity charge the battery. 4. Always fully charge the battery after every shift until a green light or LCD or lamp is indicated. 5. Never pull the plugs apart by pulling on the cables. 6. Always store the charger leads back in a safe position. 7. On HF and track air chargers, check the O-rings and filters every three months. 8. Report all faults, fault codes, damage, malfunction or concerns to a supervisor or manager.